Um, I think there's so much value in this that actually is not even environmental. Back in graduate school and in, in my doctoral studies, I was got involved in a group of social psychologists looking at the value belief norm theory of of environmentalism. And there's this um, kind of social psychological system that we explored and and um, provided empirical support for on how you connect basic human values to environmental behaviors. And the key connective piece between values like egoism but also altruism and um, openness to change and traditional values um, to recycling, uh, vegetarianism, supporting environmental policy, is you both have to uh, facilitate awareness of consequences, i.e. we need better information, but that's not enough. That's that kind of information deficit model we have. Um, you also need attribution of responsibility, and it's that combination that becomes the kernel of a new norm that helps people connect their basic human values to environmental behaviors. So we really started focusing on that. That is, how does service learning serving a community who faces a problem potentially improve the attribution of responsibility? And we think the mechanism is basic efficacy. That is, you not only have to believe an object you care about is under threat, you have to believe that you can do something about it. So what ser things like service learning do and the applied research that I do with my students is it allows them to actually do the research themselves and begin to see that they can make a difference and then that in some cases will also lead to a norm that they have responsibility for um, applying their skills to a, a problem. So the value of this kind of work for the community and the students, because both of them are now involved in the research that we do. So we have high school students out there taking um, samples and looking at air and noise pollution data, and my students are out there doing it. And it, it's that space where you combine the awareness of, of the, the condition or the consequences of these disparities along with the attribution of responsibility. It is in that kind of alchemy, if you will, that will lead to um, more engagement um, and hopefully you know, support for changes in policies and um, also you know, a desire to be a leader in a community fighting for those changes. You know, as a professor, um, one of the big rewards is to see my students succeeding um, and learning. Um, and in a, in a way, modeling what happened with me with my professors, going all the way back to an undergraduate. I had a, I had a group of professors and mentors um, who supported and mentored me but also challenged me to go out and take on the big environmental puzzles of the time. And so at the time, environmental justice was one of those. Uh, today it's climate change. But um, being able to, to help my students f get into positions where they're taking on the environmental challenges that uh, have to be taken on, even as an undergraduate, is a reward for me as a, a teacher and a mentor. And we are social um, beings, and we um, get more value out of helping others, uh, and, as well as helping ourselves. And so uh, that's a you know part of that reward kind of social psychology, I think, um, that is you know, a big reason I do what I do. I do what I do because there are voices that are not being represented in the conversation, in the policy decisions, in the political processes. And so uh, I'm committed 
in my research program in environmental justice to continue to do that.